All right, everyone. This is going to be a video on cutting cardstock on the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro Blue Diode Laser. I'm going to kind of go over both my settings and also my setup for it because I do it a little bit differently than I do most of my other ones. I'm going to start here at the end and show you the finished product that we're going to be working towards. And what you can see here is it's a cutout for a birthday card. Um, you can see here on the front of it, there's virtually no charring. There's no blackening of the white cardstock. There's no shading or anything like that. Um, when I flip it over, there is a little bit. You can kind of see that around like on the highlights on the balloon. There's a little bit. But even that is very, very minor. That can be wiped off with a brush. And this was just completely straight off the laser, which you'll see here in a moment. What we'll kind of do to finish this up is I have a piece of colored cardstock that I cut out that is the dimensions needed for it. And what we will do is we will adhere that on the inside here on the back of the card like that, which will end up giving us a pretty nice looking birthday card that I can use at that point. I think you can see it'll end up looking like this. And like that, sorry. So what we'll do is we'll go over the settings. When I'm doing this, um, I'm gonna go over the way I create the layout in Adobe Illustrator and then how I get it set up in Lightburn. And then I'm also gonna show you for this one, rather than just being directly on my honeycomb bed, I actually affix this onto a piece of blue acrylic and use that for the cutting base for it. The reason for that is when I was doing it directly on the honeycomb bed, I was getting a lot of flare-ups, so there were a lot of places where this just really charred. Now, generally on the back, it's not going to matter because I'm covering it with the cardstock anyway, but there were even times where on the front piece here, there were places where it had flared up and kind of reflected back and charred the front of the cardstock, which resulted in a lot of wasted materials as I was going through it. Um, when I stopped using it directly on the honeycomb bed and used the blue acrylic sheet that I discovered before I can't cut with a blue diode laser, um, it actually it causes it to absorb that light and that heat a lot better and gives me a very clean, very smooth cut. So with that, we'll go ahead and dive into the computer and I'll start in Illustrator and then we'll go through the entire process. Okay, we'll go ahead and start here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm not going to go through too much in this because this isn't a tutorial on using Illustrator. This is about the laser. But I do kind of want to show a few different things I do here. Um, so what you'll notice over here on the right is I've got several different layers where I've gone through a, a multiple cards. Uh, what I have is on one layer I have the border, and that's that rectangle that goes around the outer edge. I use that because when I export from here into Lightburn, I don't bother doing it as an SVG. I just export it as a PNG file, and then I import it into Lightburn and I do the trace in there. That gives me a lot more flexibility in all the layouts. I don't have to be as exact in the lines and everything like that. And it just, it's worked a lot better for me. But because I'm doing that, I need to make sure I have that border there. That way I have something I can cut out when I'm in Illustrator. I also have a separate layer over here that is all just the different shapes I've done. That way I can reuse them easily for some flowers I've done, which I show in a moment. Um, a little diploma, the balloon, um, some books and stuff like that. So what I'll do here is I've got, this layer is my template mask. That's what I do when I want to get started. I alt click and drag that down to make a duplicate of it. And then I'll add in all my content there. So what you're seeing here is that card that I showed at the beginning. This is the one I actually created for a 14th birthday party, well for 14th birthday card for someone. And then I've got the name down on there. Um, everything in here, it's all, separate pieces and everything like that. That way it's very easy. I can just go in here and I can double click on the name, change it to whatever I need to, um, and then go and print it out. What I did on the fonts is you'll want to make sure that you're set to uh, center align for them. And that way when you position the middle on the page, when you add in a new name or anything like that, it centers and expands out. It makes it a lot easier. You don't have to go in and tweak the font unless you get very long names. It just won't fit on the layout you have. I did the same thing up here for the age. So that way, again, it's, it's centered in, in, in there. Whatever you might want to do for anything as you're going through there, it's very easy to change the 
birthday celebration as well as the name. Um, and then everything, of course, you see here, these are all just little line art pieces I've made as I was going through everything for all of these pieces. Um, I'll show a couple of different card layouts I have just in case. I did one that's all rainbows and unicorns. Um, I did one that was just kind of a cheers with wine glasses for it. I did a graduation card for a friend. Uh, kind of a anniversary slash Valentine's Day card. And that's what all those flowers that I did over here were. So I could easily click and drag them in there when I made the vines and everything like that for it. Um, and then I did a baseball birthday for my nephew to go through there. Uh, and then this is just another one I'm working on for a college campus uh, card that they can send out for graduation, stuff like that. It's got a silhouette of the actual campus piece on there. Now, as I was saying, what I'd like to do is export it as a PNG. So when I've got that, I'll go down here to the asset export and you see I've got that selected and I do it as a 4X scale PNG. And then I just export it to the folder. You can see here, oh, here are all the different ones I've created. Um, let me change this one to name the asset, just make it easy to keep track of what I wanted. So we'll do that. We'll export it into streamers and cake. Select that. And now that's exported through there. So with that exported again, you can see here, it's just a matter of doing your layout exactly as you want to make sure your things, everything's going to be connected to the edge of the card so that things don't cut out and fall out. Um, it's very important that you use the stencil font if you're cutting out numbers and non stencil connected fonts. If you want to go through and have the letters joined together, that way it has a nice flow to it and everything sticks together very well when you do the actual cutout in the card. So with that, we'll go ahead and hop over into Lightburn and I'll go over the settings and then we'll go in and actually show how to do the cut. All right, here in Lightburn, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna open up a card template I created and I'll kind of go over the parts of that. So it's my card template right here. And what I've got in here is I've got a couple of different things on different tool layers. So this piece right here this is what I'll use. It's the 117 millimeters by 167 millimeters. And that's what I'll use for cutting out the colored inset that goes on the back of the card to give it the nice color pop for it. Uh, right now it's set on a tool layer, uh, non-framed. It's just there out of the way, but I keep it on there that way I can remember exactly what sizing I need. The tool layer here, this is actually what I use for the cutout of the card. If I'm doing it on a full sheet of cardstock, I need to cut it out to the A7 card dimensions, which are the 254 millimeters wide by 177 millimeters tall. Uh, right now, uh, in this example, I'm not actually going to be cutting it out fully from a full sheet of cardstock. I found a inexpensive pack of A7 cards and envelopes on Amazon. Uh, that way I can just cut out the image I need rather than having to actually cut out the entire framing of the card. I will go over the settings though. It's, it's the same for as for cutting out the actual image itself. But for right now, I'm just using that for framing to make sure I get my image placed where I need to have everything. This second frame down here that's also on the tool layer too that's not framed or used in any way, that is so that I can properly align the image so that it will lay out correctly when I do the cutout on the card. Um, the way I use that is, so we'll go ahead and do an import. I'll go to that, well, let's go to the Grace 14 that I put in there. And this is, of course, this is just the full PNG that was exported from there. So with that imported, I'm going to hit Alt T to do the trace. It's all black and white, so I don't really have to tweak anything in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And that gives me this nice layout for it. Um, now what you'll see though is if I zoom in, it's got the double line around there, and that's because of that extra line I had on the border. So I'll hit Control U to ungroup it. I'll select this outer edge and delete it. I'll zoom back out. I'll select all of this again and Control G to regroup it. Now with that completed, I'll hold the Control key and select this other rectangle, and I'm going to go ahead and center them. 
And now, like I was saying, what that gives me is now I have, this is going to be perfectly aligned so that it's gonna be centered where I need it to be on the front of the card when I do the cutout. Because I'm gonna be cutting through the front of the card, in, that way in case there's any charring like I, you saw there on my beginning piece, it'll be on the back that gets covered up by the color. We're gonna to need to go ahead and flip this. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna flip it right here to do the mirror vertically and then we're gonna mirror horizontally. And what that's gonna give us, it's upside down, and so you can see this is the front of the card, so when it's closed, it's gonna give everything in the right perspective and everything like that. Um, you can do this multiple different ways. The main goal, though, is that your laser is cutting through the front so that any burning or charring that does happen to come up is on the back to make it easy to cover. Now, as I said at the very beginning, when I'm doing this, I'm actually not gonna be putting it directly on the honeycomb bed. I'm gonna be using a sheet of blue acrylic that you'll see here in a moment when I'm doing the setup. And then I'm gonna put the card stock on top of that. And that allows it that, like I said, that blue acrylic absorbs the light and it allows me to have a much cleaner cut than I was getting when I was going onto the honeycomb itself. So for the card stock, if you're cutting it out fully, it's gonna be the same settings as what I'm doing here. And it's gonna be, the 500 millimeters per minute speed, 20% max power, and a pass count of three. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is you can do it faster at a higher power, fewer passes and all of that. But what I determined as I was going through it and I did a lot of tests and I wasted a lot of material is the 520 with three passes gave me the cleanest cut so that all of the pieces just fell out without having me to go back through and cut it with an exacto knife or anything and it also gave the minimal amount of charring or burn back on any of the white cardstock i was doing so that's why i'm doing the 523 passes if you're doing this out of a full sheet of cardstock and you're cutting this as well this layer would be the exact same you'd have this at the 500 20, three pass for the cutout as well. The one thing though that'll be different here is on a full sheet of cardstock, you're gonna wanna have a line directly in the middle of the card to make it very easy to kind of fold that over. It's kind of like a perforated or scored fold. If you're gonna do that, that one will be at the 300 millimeters per minute, 20% power and one pass. The reason for that is you aren't wanting this to burn all the way through. You want, aren't wanting it to have a deep etch at all. You just wanted it to go through and kind of give a scoring on that card so that it's a lot easier when you need to fold it. You don't have to worry about guessing and using a straight edge and everything like that to fold it directly along the line. So again, anything you're going to be cutting out, if you're cutting out of a full sheet of cardstock to the A7, will be the 500 millimeters per minute, 20% power, three passes which would be the same that you're using here on your actual image for the card. And then if you're doing the scored line on that sheet so you know where to fold it, that would be the 300 millimeters per minute, 20% power, one pass. And that's really all there is to it. It's basically you wanna make sure you get that aligned the way it is so it's perfectly centered in within there. And then you'll use a sheet of blue or light blue acrylic underneath the card stock to absorb the light from the laser and prevent any burn back or flashing on the back of the car that would give you that charring effect. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll jump in and I'll show you the actual setup with the blue acrylic on the laser bed. And then I'll let you see through the entire cutting and then we'll kind of come back together at the end and do a little bit of a wrap up of everything. So uh, there will be a bookmark. Feel free to skip over this if you don't wanna watch it cut doing the actual cutout. I will have it sped up, but if it doesn't add anything to you, skip over to the very end and we'll just do a little bit of a wrap up there.
so we, did, we didn't really start at the end because here's the final, final product. Um, this is with the actual colored piece, the inset affixed to it. Um, I attach it with double-sided tape around the outer edge and then a little bit in the middle here to make sure it doesn't flap around and stick in there. Um, you can see here now that it's finished, you have a really nice looking card. It gives it a very crisp lines. The color, I think, adds a lot to it. And then you have plenty of space on the inside here to write your messages and make it a really nice birthday card or any type of card that you're making for anybody. But as you can see here with those settings and that kind of setup, you get a really, really clean lines with your diode laser. There's no charring. It looks very nice and clean. And it just allows you to have a really good end product. So with that, this is everything that I've kind of worked through on doing the cardstock cutting on the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro diode laser. I hope this was helpful to everybody and good luck out there with all of your lasering.